Happy holidays, everybody. I hope you guys all received the gifts that you wished for during Christmas, during Hanukkah, anything that you guys are celebrating. I hope you guys have been having a good time. And uh, yeah, as these holidays seem to pass by, we all start getting ready for New Year's. Um, you know, the fresh start, the, the, the turning of the page, the new chapter and uh, a new beginning. And every year, people make this list of New Year's resolutions, basically goals that they hope to achieve for the end of the year. And normally they go along the lines of, I want to exercise, I want to find love and you know, whatever else there may be. But what I'm realizing is every year it's always the same goals, which means that we never actually achieve them in the first place. And why is that? Why can't we stay consistent? I mean, most of us start them. Why can't we just finish them? The question I'm asking is why don't New Year's resolutions actually stick? So with that question in mind, I decided to make this video, a video where we analyze why New Year's resolutions fail. And as a little bonus, I also added a whole part of how you can actually plan them better to achieve these goals because you're able to do them. It's just about how you plan them and how you organize them in your head, right? So since my whole channel is based around self-help, I figured I would combine both of these questions and overall give you guys the answer you're looking for. So quickly, before we do get into the video, I'm gonna ask you guys to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get right into the video. What's going on homies and homies, it's Elon here. And firstly, before I do get into anything, I do wanna say thank you so, so, so much for all the support recently. We've gained like 40 plus subscribers in the past two weeks. We're almost at 3000. And honestly, I can't thank you guys enough. So genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much and uh, yeah, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and let's get right into the video. Now let's get real with each other. You're here because you actually want to accomplish something in this upcoming year. You want to start being a finisher. You are sick of your current behaviors and you are ready to change because if you aren't, then honestly, this video is not for you. In this video, we're going to get down to the real what you need. I broke it down into four chapters and we're going to go over all of them. All right. So make sure you stay for all four of them because each one is super important. And I purposely move the order around so that people that actually stay longer get rewarded. So be sure to watch this video fully from start to finish to get the most out of it. And we're going to go over exactly how to accomplish your goals. So let's get right into it. Number one, you have to look at how you set your goals, right? Normally people think of goals in a very vague manner. Oh, I want to exercise. I want to lose weight. I want to be healthier. It's very vague and you don't really know. Um, there's no, there, there, there's no timeline. It's, it's indefinite, right? So you always need to have a timeline when you're planning something because otherwise you're just going to keep procrastinating on it. Procrastinating is actually a big part of human nature. And that is why most people wait till the last minute to finish their assignments. But that due date is what makes them rush it at the last minute, at least. Because when you have a date in mind, you want to accomplish it in time. So on top of setting a timeline, the goal is still too vague. Let's say you say this year, I want to lose weight. It's still too vague. You don't know what that means. So you're going to have to change that up a bit. You're going to have to get very specific with your goals. Sit down for like 30 minutes and just write down a list of what you want to do and keep going into more and more detail. The more detailed it is, the better it's going to be for you. And I'm going to explain why in another chapter of this video. So stay tuned. And in the meantime, I'm going to explain some things that you want to be thinking about when you're setting these goals. Essentially, you want to start thinking of the emotions because by human nature, if we ever do something, it's because we feel like we want to do it. It's all through emotions, all through our feeling. If we're really not in the mood to do something, we will not do it. That's just how we are. So with that being said, when you're setting a goal, you want to have that in mind. You want to have how you feel in mind. So essentially what I personally do is let's say I have a new goal in mind. After I do it every night, I'd reflect on it. And let's say it's about working out, right? So I would say, okay, this morning I worked out and I felt like I had more energy through the day. I felt like I was happier. I felt less stressed. And I write down all these positive things that go with it. And that way I look forward to it. I know that if I want to have that good feeling, it's going to come from doing this habit. And overall, that way I'm attaching motivation to it. I'm attaching a level of curiosity of if this is how good I feel right now, how good am I going to feel if I keep doing it? And you start really bringing it into your life rather than just having no attachment to it. So right now we're going to do a quick challenge. We're going to take a goal and we're going to optimize it to actually be effective and to overall make somebody want to do it, right? So let's say the goal is I want to lose weight. That is the goal. That is all you said in your new year's resolutions. It says this year, I want to lose weight. Obviously we have no metric. We have nothing to follow. We don't know how we're going to lose weight. We don't know if we're actually on track. So let's break it down. The new goal is going to be something along the lines of within the first 90 days, 
That way we have a timeline. We have a we have a short term goal that can keep us motivated because if we say the whole year, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to stay motivated. So let's say the first 90 days, it's going to keep us hungry. So the first 90 days, I want to lose 20 pounds. You know exactly how many pounds you want to lose in just how much time and what you're going to have to do to get there. So in about 90 days, that's about three months, which basically means around two pounds or so a week. Maybe a bit less even now that we have that goal in mind and we know what we need to be doing how are we going to get there right so we're going to say five to six times a week we're going to be doing cardio and you pick whatever time you want to do this whether you're somebody that prefers doing it in the morning or somebody that prefers doing it at night you're going to pick whatever time in your goal so that way you know when you're going to be exercising and what type of exercise you're doing now strength training could also be done you could be doing both but you know that at least you're going to be getting your cardio done every day because that is important and finally we're going to evaluate how can we actually help this process right so if we keep eating terrible food then we're just never going to achieve that goal. So looking at that, we're going to also decide and I'm going to be eating 500 calories less per day than what is required to keep my current body weight. So you can look at a calorie calculator, which is a difficult word to say. A calorie cal calorie calculator, but easy to type. So search it on Google and you can find how much calories you need per day to basically maintain your current body weight. Now, with that being said, Subtract 500, that's how many calories you're gonna be eating per day. So now we know how long we have, we know how much weight we wanna lose, we know what workouts are gonna be doing, we know how much we're gonna be eating. You have everything you need in order to accomplish this goal. You have it all mapped out for you. There's nothing left to think about. There's nothing left to really ponder about. Instead, you're just gonna go and start taking action. The easiest part is when all you have to do is just do the action. Because a lot of us get so caught up in planning that we just spend our whole life doing it and we never actually start. So just start. So with that being said, it perfectly brings us into chapter two, which is procrastination. Now, this is a huge, huge, huge problem because all of us are so prone to it. We're all so used to just, you know, pushing everything off. Oh, I'm going to start on Monday or I'm going to start January 1st or I'm going to start whenever. Doesn't matter. Look, what you have to do is start today. And I know I'm uploading this on a Monday, but that's just, that's not intentional. It's just, you have to start the second you want to start, right? It doesn't stop pushing it off. Stop saying that you're going to do it later. Just start now. The second this goal comes to your mind, the second you're like, okay, I want to do this, then go do it. Just go start. That's the most important part. It's telling yourself that, you know what? This is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. You're not pushing it off because when you do that, you're subconsciously telling yourself that it's not that important, that it could wait, that if I can wait until Monday, I can wait until, you know, two weeks from now. And it, it just repeats every year like that. So in order to break that pattern, we have to consciously decide to do it. And with the mention of consciously doing something, we're going to go into chapter three, which is habit building. Now, building habits is always something that's interesting, and I've made a few videos about this, but it seems like people really try to avoid this because it is probably one of the most challenging things that anybody could really do. And I really respect the people that when they want to actually adapt something into their life, they just do it. They don't care what it takes. They don't care the fact that they're going to have to, you know, completely forget how they do something and relearn it in a different way. So essentially, when you're building a habit, it's replacing something that you're already currently doing. So let's start from the beginning. Let's say you want to start exercising. At first, it's going to be difficult. You have to consciously tell yourself every single day, you know what? It doesn't matter. I have to do it. I have to do it. Force yourself. Literally just do whatever you have to do, but you're going to keep going. You're going to keep doing it. And that's purely out of your motivation to do it. That's purely out of your willpower. And the beginning is difficult. The beginning is the most difficult time. It gets easier over time. And that's what people don't understand because they start. And since it's so difficult in the beginning, they quit. What you have to do is just take that first step and we're going to build from there. Once you start doing it a little bit, you start doing it for maybe a few weeks, a month. This is personally my problem. I do it for a few weeks or about a month. And then I'm like, yo, I just did it for two weeks or a month. Like this is a, this culture of celebration. Let's, let's take a day off. Let's just, you know, enjoy what just happened. I'm really happy about this. And that one day off leads to never coming back to it. And it happens every single time without a miss. So I promise you, it's not just like a one-time thing. I'm telling you, you have to go until you achieve your goal. Don't stop earlier. Don't take a day off earlier. It's not a reason to celebrate. If you're doing it for a while, good. Acknowledge the fact that you're accomplishing things, but don't celebrate it too early. You have to keep going. 
because if you stop, that's it. It's gone. You messed up. And I know it sounds harsh, but that's the reality. If you mess up even for one day, odds are nine times out of 10, the person will not restart the next day. It's just not how it works. So what you have to do is just keep going, push until it starts to feel like it's natural. Push until it starts to feel like a routine. Like let's say you start exercising every morning, then every morning, right when you wake up, you're going to be like, okay, let's go exercise. And it's going to feel weird if you wake up and go to work without exercising before that. It's just not natural, right? So when it turns into a subconscious task, when it turns into a subconscious routine, that's when you successfully built a habit. Until then, you have to keep forcing yourself and telling yourself, okay, one more day, one more day, let's keep going, let's keep going, until it becomes a natural part of your daily routine. So a lot of people, let's say, I prefer doing it in the morning, but I have other friends that, you know, they prefer exercising in the, in the evening. So right after work, when they come home, literally they pack their gym bag, and as they're on their way home, they go to the gym. So right after work, for example, it just becomes a routine. Like from work, you just drive straight to the gym or in these times, you know, you drive home and you work out at home, but, but whatever it may be, you just have to keep doing it consistently and not celebrate too early. You have to keep going until you achieve your goal. Wow. This video is a combination of a lot of different techniques and I'm putting them all together because I realized that this is what's personally been helping me achieve a lot more in my life. And I really, really, really hope that it helps you guys in this next year of your life as well. So chapter four and the final chapter, removing obstacles. Now, this is probably one of the most important parts of the video. And I purposely put it a bit later for the people that are still watching. So if you're still watching and you're still here, please comment the word blue down below. Just say blue. And uh, I'll know that you guys actually watch the video and there's gonna be a level of respect that other people won't know about. But anyway, with that being said, removing obstacles is the most important part because every time you see this temptation, every time you pass by something that makes you want to, you know, break whatever habit you're trying to build, it's only a matter of time until you actually do it. It's only a matter of time until it breaks you and just, you know, takes over and it wins. So what you have to do is remove these temptations, remove these obstacles. If you're trying to lose weight and there's brownies in the house or whatever, get rid of those brownies, give them to somebody else, do whatever you got to do. But get rid of them in your house. If you're trying to be more productive, you know, unplug your video games, literally uh, fully unplug them, move them away, do whatever you have to do. So that way, if you ever want to play video games, you still could, you just need to replug in the whole device and make it, make it inconvenient. Let's say for your phone, if your phone's too distracting, remove your social media or turn notifications off. And that way, whenever you want to, you know, use social media, you'd have to literally re-download the application. Just make it inconvenient for yourself because well, that's what life is now. Life is about making everything easier for us. I mean, how easy is it to open Snapchat when you're on your phone? It's literally just one tap and that's it. So if you make it inconvenient for yourself, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to actually, you know, start procrastinating because let's say what I did, I moved all my social media apps to the fifth or sixth page of my phone. And I purposely always leave my phone on the first page. And the first page is just a blank page so that I don't get distracted by any apps. I don't get motivated by anything. If I ever open my phone to go to Snapchat, for example, and I look at the blank page, I'm like, do I really want to do this right now? And normally it stops me. So that's one thing. Number two, I've had my social media notifications off for about a year now. And honestly, that is something that's helped me a lot. And the list goes on, right? So you really have to start making things inconvenient for yourself because number one, it makes you more appreciative of the fact that the world is coming to a place that everything is becoming easily accessible and easily convenient. But at the same time, you have to realize that there's a limit to these things. You have to be the one in control. You can't let these devices, you can't let whatever is going on around you control what you're doing. You have to be the one that is fully in control, that is fully in power. Woo. And with that being said, that concludes the fourth and final chapter of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please drop a like on this video. We're trying to break 50 likes. And I'm also going to ask that you share this with a friend, family member, anybody that is the way that my channel could grow. And I'd really, really, really appreciate it. So once again, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button. And as usual, I'll see you guys on one of the videos on the screen now. Peace.